Welcome to the lecture on mathematical finance. In the last lecture, we studied in detail the question of existence of an equivalent martingale measure and its relation uh, to the arbitrage freeness of the underlying financial market model. However, we completely ignored the question whether or not an equivalent martingale measure, if it exists, whether it's unique. And this I would like to do in this lecture. Moreover, I would like to discuss the consequences when uh, the equivalent martingale measure is unique. So let us have a closer look at all these objects in more detail. So to start with, here's an example. So I would like to consider a financial market model denoted as usual with S bar, consisting of one risk-free security and one risky security denoted by S0 and S1 respectively. And moreover, I would like to assume that the time horizon of this financial market model is simply the two values 0 or 1, meaning we consider here a one period financial market model. Moreover, this process should start deterministically, namely with this value 1, 2. And at time 1, this process assumes one of the following three different value, namely either the value 1, 3, in case the underlying random variable u takes the value 1, or takes the value 1, 2, if the underlying random variable u takes the value 2, or the value 1, 1, in case u is equal to 3. And I would like to assume here that uh, the distribution of this um, additional random variable u is strictly positive for any value little u in the set 1 up to 3. And now our task will be to construct an equivalent martingale measure. And uh, for that we have to do the following. We have to come up with a measure q such that the distribution of u under q is strictly positive for any event um, that uh, this random variable u uh, attains. And moreover, the martingale property should be satisfied under this measure q, meaning that the conditional expectation of x1 minus x0 should be equal to zero. And since uh, our um, sigma algebra f zero can be chosen to be the tribute sigma algebra. This is equal to the expectation of the difference between the discounted price process at time point one and the discounted price process at time point zero under this measure q, q almost chosen. So and you see here uh, in that particular situation the um, numerator remains constant in time, meaning that the discounted price process equals the price process. So and in order to come up with an equivalent martingale measure, we now have to solve the following system of linear equations. And the first uh, equation is the following, namely this one coming from uh, the condition expectation or the expectation, namely we have zero on that side and then we have simply to compute this expected value and this can be done easily so q takes um, q is defined or this random variable x1 is defined in terms of the random variable u and u takes only three different values meaning if u is equal to one then um, this difference is equal to one you see it clearly from here three minus two and uh, then you see if u is equal to two you have the difference here, 2 minus 2 is 0. That's why this term is not appearing here. And the last term comes from the difference between 1 and 2, which gives you the value minus 1 times the probability of the event that u takes the value 3 under this measure q. And moreover, we also know that this um, distribution of u under q should be a probability measure meaning as uh, the, the q probability of the sum of these three events should sum up to one 
And now it is clear that this system of um, linear equations, which is an inhomogeneous system, um, admits you infinitely many solutions. So let's solve that. So I simply put um, the probability that the event of the event that u takes the value 2 equal to little q. Plug that in and then I can solve for the remaining two variables simply by adding up or subtracting these two equations. And then you see um, the outcome, namely the probability that q, um, uh, the q probability of the event at u is equal to 1 takes the value 1 half times 1 minus q. And on the other hand, the uh, q probability of the event that u is equal to 3 takes the value again 1 half minus q. And now you see if you restrict q um, to the open interval 0, 1, you end up with a, uh, with a desired um, distribution, namely then the resulting uh, distribution of q under this measure q is indeed a probability measure. And you clearly see that you come up with uh, infinitely many solutions, meaning we have in that particular situation infinitely many um, uh, equivalent martingale measures and it is clear why this is the case because this system of linear equation we have here two equations but three unknowns this was simply the reason for that and this brings us to the question can we specify conditions such that the uh, um, uh, equivalent martingale measure is unique for an arbitrage-free financial market model. And the arbitrage-freeness guarantees us the existence of an equivalent martingale measure. And from that example over here, it's clear that uh, in case um, this random variable uh, S1 may assume three different values, we should have here three equations such that we have a chance to have an unique uh, solution. So this means that in that particular situation we should have not only one risky security but we should have two risky securities. Okay, so let us, to study that thing in more detail, let us introduce the notion of a European contingent claim. And that's nothing else but a non-negative ft measurable random variable, which I would like to denote by c, which is defined in our favorite filtered probability space, omega f, uh, ftp. And let me remind you that in the definition of a financial market model, we assumed that um, the sigma algebra ft is equal to the sigma algebra f. And such a random variable u is then called an European contingent claim or simply an European option. And a European contingent claim c is called a derivative of an underlying financial market model uh, if um, in addition this random variable c is measurable with respect to the sigma algebras generated by um, s bar naught up to s bar t. So you see, we here simply ask that that random variable or that process is adapted to that filtration, but this filtration might be larger than the natural filtration generated by that process. So um, this is clearly a restriction if we asked that c is simply measurable with respect to that smaller sigma algebra. So here are a couple of examples and we have seen some of uh, these objects already in the first lecture. So let me consider a um, d plus one dimensional financial market model meaning that s bar consists of one risk-free security and d risky securities and then a European call or put option with maturity 
t in a pr uh, strike price k is, as we have seen, simply the positive part of the difference between the terminal value of our price process, or more precisely the ice component of our price process, and the strike price k. And the put option is given as positive part of the difference between the strike price k and the terminal value, or more precisely the ice component of the terminal value of um, our price process. So that's one instant of an uh, European Union option. And you see why it is the case. Clearly, since um, ST is an adapted, or S is an adapted process, this means that ST is uh, FT measurable. And here we then have clearly an FT measurable random variable. Same holds true here. Let me give you another example. And for that, I would like to pick um, a subset of our um, um, in time index set i. And I would like to define um, this following random variable as i averaged as simply uh, the average of our um, um, security prices at the time points given by the subset J. And then we call an average price call or put option with maturity T and strike price K the following random variable, namely, we take this um, random variable as I average, we subtract this K and again, we take the positive part for the call option. And for the corresponding put option, we consider the difference or the positive part of the difference between k and this random variable as i average. And on the other hand, we can also consider the average strike call or put option with maturity t. And this is simply the following. This is like a uh, European Union call option. However, the strike price is given by that random variable as i um, average. So here we have seen another instance of an, um, of an European Union option. Why? Well, clearly that random variable is FT measurable. These random variables are um, again FT measurable because here we used that by due to the fact that the process is adapted, then for instance, if we have here some uh, time point t, which is less than capital T, then we know that this random variable is ft measurable, but uh, the sigma algebra ft is contained in the sigma algebra f capital T. So that's the second option. Um, Here's another example, namely the so-called barrier call and put options, which maturity T, strike price K, and barrier B. And I would like to give you two instances, namely the so-called up and out call option. And that's the following. So the first part looks like a classical European call option. However, you multiply it by the indicator function of the event that the price process um, up to maturity does not exceed the level B. And the put option is um, defined in a similar way. Uh, on the other hand, um, the so-called down and in call or put option is defined uh, in the following way. It again looks like a classical a European call option, but now we multiply it with a minimum of the ice component of the price process over all time points in our index set i, and we assume that this random variable should be uh, less than or equal to b. And in that situation here, we assume that b is chosen in such a way that it is less than um, uh, s. Uh, not i, meaning, yeah, in other case, 
that indicator function would be satisfied from the beginning. So then we have a classical European call option. And it's only interesting in that situation. And likewise, in the case of an up and out call option, we assume that this barrier B should be larger than the initial value. Uh, and clearly, this random variable is F capital T measurable. The same holds true for that random variable. So indeed, we have here a European option. And the last example is the so-called look back call input option. And that's the following. So the call option is simply defined as um, the terminal value of the ice component of our price process minus the minimal value the price process um, has attained um, during the time horizon i. And you see, in case this minimum is attained at the terminal value, then the payoff, of payoff is equal to zero. Otherwise, we have a positive payoff. Uh, or, no, put it differently, if the minimum um, uh, is larger than the terminal value, then we have a positive uh, payoff. And for the put option, uh, with this uh, look back uh, mechanism, we consider the difference between the maximum of the ice components of our price process over this time horizon i minus the terminal value of the ice component of our price process. So here we have a couple of examples and there are many more. Um, and later on, we would like to compute a fair price for these um, random variables. But in order to do so, we should first should um, uh, introduce the notion of attainability or replicability of an a European continuing claim. And that's the following. So again, I start with the financial market model as bar, which has D plus one components and is defined on our favorite filter probability space. And we call then European contingent claim, which I denoted by C, attainable or replicable. If there exists a self-financing trading strategy, denoted here again by H bar, such that this random variable C is equal um, to the discounted value of our portfolio at maturity, meaning it is equal to the scalar product between uh, the um, our trading strategy MH and uh, the terminal value of our price process. Um, and we call such a self-financing trading strategy H a replicating strategy for this um, European contingent claim C. So here's the first remark. So if we uh, have an European contingent claim C and the corresponding replicating uh, trading strategy, then it is clear that um, uh, we also can express um, the condition that C should be equal to uh, the value of the this, uh, um, uh, equal to the discounted uh, value process at um, at maturity, and here we can also express it in terms of the discounted value process at maturity if we simply divide by the value as not capital T. And you see, that's exactly equal to our process VH bar at maturity T. So, and this ratio between the um, uh, European option uh, and um, um, the terminal value of our discounted price process is also called discounted European, European claim. Okay, so 
In the next theorem, I would like to ask two questions. You see, here at that point, we simply have the terminal value of our discounted value process. So what can we say about um, uh, the value at other time points? And what, how, what is the relation to that random variable over here? And that's the assertion of the following theorem. So for that, I consider a financial market model S bar, and I would like to assume that this financial market model is arbitrage free. And moreover, I consider a European contingent claim C. And then it holds true, first of all, that the discounted uh, European claim is integrable with respect to any equivalent martingale measure. And moreover, we have that this uh, discounted value process uh, is a non-negative martingale under Q, and it holds true that um, the random variable um, VH bar T, meaning the value of our discounted value process at time point T, can be expressed as a conditional expectation of our discounted claim under this measure Q. So let us have a look at the proof of that theorem. So first of all, we should prove the integrability of our discounted claim under this equivalent martingale measure Q. So, since we assume that um, our um, European contingent claim is attainable, this means we find a self-financing trading strategy such that um, this European option is um, attained, meaning that um, this um, ratio, uh, this discounted um, um, European claim equals to the value of our discounted price poses at maturity. And since by assumption C is uh, non-negative and also by assumption our um, um, zero component of our price process which serves as a numerator is strictly positive we also know that this value is larger or equal to zero p almost joint hence we also know that this value is larger or equal to zero q almost surely for any equivalent martingale measure and now the theorem 2.7c comes into play which tells us whenever we have an, an an equivalent um, martingale measure and the property that for self-financing trading strategy as uh, a discounted value at terminal time point capital T is larger or equal Q, uh, Q almost surely, then it holds true that this discounted value process is a martingale under Q. And as a consequence, we know then that the expectation of the discounted claim under this measure Q, which is by that equality over here, equal to the expectation of our discounted uh, value process at time point capital T under this measure Q. And since this quantity over here by that observation is uh, non-negative, this is also equal to the expected value. Um, of this random variable and taking then the expectation with respect to Q. And we know since th that process is a martingale that this random variable is in L1, meaning that expectation over here is finite. And this shows the integrability of our discounted claim under this measure Q. And moreover, we have uh, by the fact that uh, the discounted value process is a martingale, that VH bar T equals to the conditional expectation of VH bar capital T given the sigma algebra F little t. And then we can plug in uh, the definition of VH bar capital T, namely that's nothing else but um, 
uh, this discounted claim. And since we know that this option, as uh, this discounted claim is non-negative, it also shows that any um, for any time point little t, the discounted value process takes values in which are non-negative. Q almost true. Hence, we have proven that um, V and this discounted value process VH bar is a non-negative martingale under Q. And we also have the representation of VH bar little t in terms of this condition expectation. And as a consequence of that theorem, we have the following. So consider a financial market model S bar, which is, should be arbitrage free. And we continue, consider an European contingent claim, which is attainable. Uh, then the following is true, namely, if you now consider two different replicating trading strategies for our um, European option C, then these uh, the corresponding value processes are the same. And you see that's immediate from uh, what we have proven over here, namely from that assertion that VH bar T is equal to that conditional expectation, we see that under this trading strategy H1, we get exactly that condition expectation and that's the same uh, as we get from uh, with respect to this um, discounted value process under this trading strategy H2. That's why these two value processes are the same. Q almost two. As a second consequence, we have the following. Again, I consider a financial market model as bar, which should be arbitrage free. And I consider a European contingent claim, which is attainable. Um, and then it holds true that for any replicating um, strategy H bar or C, and for uh, any uh, two different uh, equivalent martingale measures, um, the value um, of our discounted price process under this replicating strategy at time point little t is equal to the conditional expectation of the discounted claim with respect to this sigma algebra ft under this measure q1 and this is also the same as um, uh, the conditional expectation of our discounted claim with respect to the sigma algebra ft under this measure q2. So and as a consequence uh, we have that at time point t equal to zero that the following two expectations are the same namely the expectation of the discounted claim under uh, the measure q1 uh, equals to the expectation of the discounted measure um, under this measure Q2. Meaning that value over here is independent of the choice of the equivalent martingale measure. To do sum up, the last two corollaries shows that on the one hand the discounted value process is independent of the choice of the replicating training strategies and the second corollary shows that the initial value of our discounted value process is independent of the choice of the equivalent martingale measure. So we will use that these two corollaries as well as the theorem in this week. So let us let me first introduce the following notion, namely the the notion of a complete financial market. So that's the following. So um, D plus one dimensional arbitrage free financial market is called complete. If every European contingent claim is attainable, meaning whatever um, non-negative FT measurable random variable you give to me in a complete market, you will find 
and replicating strategy for that uh, contingent claim. So let me now uh, have a look what are the consequences of the fact um, when we have a complete financial market. And that's the assertion of the following theorem. So again, I consider a d plus one dimensional financial market denoted here again with s bar. I assume that this financial market is arbitrage free. And then it holds true that if s bar is additionally uh, complete, then there exists a unique equivalent Martingale measure. So here we have a characterization um, of the uniqueness of equivalent Martingale measures. So, and you see the proof is not difficult. So, let me start uh, with the following. I consider the following F capital T measurable random variable, namely this European Union contingent claim denoted by C, which is given in terms of the indicator function of an event A chosen from the sigma algebra F capital T uh, times the value of our um, uh, risk-free security at maturity. And um, since our um, financial market model is complete by assumption, we know that there exists a self-financing trading strategy H bar such that the discounted claim um, can be written in terms of the terminal value of our discounted uh, value process, which is nothing else but the scalar product between uh, the terminal value of our trading strategy times the terminal value of our discounted um, value process. So now let us take two different um, equivalent Martingale measures. So by the assumption that our um, financial market model is arbitrage free, we know that the set of all equivalent Martingale measures is non-empty. That's why we can choose um, two different measures from that set. So, but then by the last corollary, we know that the initial value of our discounted value process is independent of the choice of the equivalent Martingale measure. Meaning we have seen that the value a a V H bar naught is on the one hand given by the expected value of the discounted European Union contingent claim under this measure Q1. And this is also equal to the expected value of this discounted value process on, uh, of this discounted European Union contingent claim under this measure Q2. Now let us plug in the definition of C. So you see if you plug in that definition, this um, um, uh, factor S not uh, capital T cancels out. We are left with the indicator function and then the expectation of this indicator function gives us on the one hand um, the value of this event A under this measure Q2 and on the other side it gives us the value of the event A under this measure Q1. And we see these two um, um, values coincide for any uh, measurable set show taken from our sigma algebra ft and by the definition of our financial market model this is equal to the sigma algebra f and this clearly shows that these two measures are equal hence the number of equivalent martingale measures is simply equal to one meaning the equivalent martingale measure is unique so this brings us naturally to the question, is also the opposite implication true? Meaning, in case we know by computation that uh, the equivalent Martingale measure is unique, does it mean that our arbitrage-free financial market model is complete? 
And if so, it would be wonderful because then it gives us immediately a, a statement whether um, that, that every contingent claim one come up with is replicable. That's why it's an interesting uh, question. And here's the result of that question. And that's the so-called second fundamental um, theorem of asset prices. So let, us, let me again consider a um, d plus one dimensional financial market model denoted by S bar. And I would like to assume that this financial market model is free of arbitrage. And then it holds true that uh, S bar is complete if and only if there exists exactly one equivalent Martingale measure. So you see we have a one to one correspondence between the number of equivalent Martingale measures and the completeness. And uh, similar to the, uh, the proof of the first fundamental theorem of asset prices, I would like to present the proof here only under the additional assumption that our sigma algebra f is finitely generated, meaning that we find um, b1 up to bn disjoint subsets of omega, which should have the property that say, if we take the union of these sets, that this is equal to omega and that f is generated by exactly this finite number of um, different sets. And the reason why I would like to assume um, uh, that additional condition is the following. I would like to avoid using a functional analysis tools in the proof. The proof, so the theorem holds true in this more general setting. However, the proof I would like to present to you is a little bit simpler in case we impose this additional assumption. And you will see exactly at what stage it will enter. Okay, so since we have to show here an, uh, an if and only if statement, we have to show two directions. But the first direction we have already addressed. So if S bar is complete, then we have seen in the last theorem that this immediately implies that the equivalent Martingale measure is unique. So this has been done in the last theorem. Check mark. So let us come now to the more interesting direction, namely, let us assume that our uh, financial market model is arbitrage free, but not complete. So meaning we would like to have here an indirect proof. I would like to on improve by contradiction. I would like to show now that this uh, leads um, to a statement that there exist at least two different equivalent Martingale measures, which would then be in contradiction to, um, uh, to our assumption that we have only one equivalent Martingale measure. Okay, so um, assuming that our financial market model is incomplete, this means uh, that there exists the European contingent claim C, which is not attainable, meaning that there exists no self-financing training strategy H bar such that the discounted uh, contingent claim e uh, equals to the um, discounted value process uh, at, um, at, at the terminal time point. So this observation here we will use in a moment. I would like to de uh, define now the following set, which I denote by capital T, and that's the set of all random variables um, which are written in the following form. Namely, uh, it con this random variable consists of a real value A and a discrete stochastic integral between this uh, process H and our discounted price process and we evaluate this discrete stochastic integral at maturity. And I would like to assume here that 
the uh, process H is a predictable process. And the first observation is that this um, set K is a linear subset of all FT measurable random uh, real valued random variables. Why it's a linear subspace? Well, let us simply take two uh, instances or two elements from the set K and here denoted by A1 and this discrete stochastic integral with respect to a uh, predictable process H1 and here with a real number A2 and a discrete stochastic integral with respect to this predictable pr process H2 and I take this then a linear combination with the um, scalars uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2. And now you see I simply can multiply out and then I can rearrange these terms and then you see I get here a new uh, real value namely the value lambda 1 times a1 plus lambda 2 times a2 and moreover by using the linearity of the discrete stochastic integral I can also um, add these two um, stochastic integrals up and I simply can write that as the stochastic integral um, of lambda h lambda 1 h1 plus lambda 2 h2 um, times uh, our discounted um, price process and this clearly shows that we have found exactly this representation meaning that indeed the linear combination of two elements from K are again in the set K. And in particular, this also shows that um, the space K is um, complete. And here now uh, comes into the picture uh, our assumption that this sigma algebra F is finitely generated. But before doing so, um, by lemma 2.3, we can also write this set K in a different way. Namely, I can um, extend this predictable process H to a self-financing training strategy H bar, which is chosen in such a way that the initial value, uh, value of our discounted value process equals to this real value A. And this we have shown that this thing is possible um, by uh, in our lemma 2.3. Meaning that k is also given in terms of the discounted value process for any self-financing training strategy h bar. And now we can come back um, to uh, the assumption, namely we have picked um, contingent claim in such a way that it is not attainable and we have seen that the discounted contingent claim is uh, cannot be re represented in terms of the terminal value of a discounted value process for any trading strategy meaning that the discounted value and uh, the discounted your opinion contingent claim is not contained in the set k so let us now come back to the fact that the sigma algebra f is finitely generated. This means that um, the um, set of all ft measurable uh, random variables z is um, isomorphic to the space uh, rn and this n comes simply from the, from the number of atoms we have here in order to generate the sigma algebra f. And we have seen that uh, the subset k is a proper subset of the space of all ft measurable random variables. Hence, um, for any uh, equivalent Martin Kell measure q, there exists a bounded non-zero ft ran measurable random variable let's call it z such that the um, uh, expectation under this measure q of the product between z and y 
is equal to zero for any y in k. So meaning we have picked here z in the orthogonal complement of this set k. And you see due to the assumption that um, f is finitely generated, we know that all these random variables are bounded. Meaning uh, we have no issue at all with uh, integrability um, uh, problems here because these are two bounded random variables so this expectation will exist always and in the particular you can see that as expectations uh, uh, so and these since these random variables are bounded they are clearly also in l2 and then you can see that as a kind of scalar product in the l2 space okay so let us now so take advantage of this representation. So by choosing a equal to one and h t constant equal to zero for all t and i, we clearly see that the, the resulting um, sum between a and this discrete stochastic integral, which is then equal to a, um, give rise to the following, namely that the random variable y of omega, which is simply that uh, sum between this um, value a and this discrete stochastic integral, is constant equal to 1 for all omega. Hence, we can also plug in the random variable constant equal to 1 in this um, expectation, and this immediately implies that the expected value of this random variable z, which we have chosen over here, under this measure q vanishes. And this property we would like to use now to come up with a new measure q tittle de, defined on our probability space omega f. Namely, we define q tittle of a as the expectation of, under this measure q, of the indicator function of a times this function phi, and this is defined for all a and the sigma algebra f, where phi is chosen in the following way, namely it's given by 1 plus this random variable c, uh, z divided by 2 times um, the infinity norm uh, of this random variable z. And you see by, uh, by using the fact that we have only um, the sigma algebra f is finitely generated and the consequence of it has um, to represent this random variable z. We see clearly that z quantity over here um, is strictly um, larger than minus 1, meaning this, ren uh, this function phi is strictly positive. And moreover, so you see when we take uh, compute the expectation of phi under this measure q and we use lin linearity um, um, to get out this one and we can also take out that term over here because that's simply the L infinity now then you see that term over here vanishes due to the fact that the expectation of this random variable z is equal to zero hence the measure q twiddle we defined is a probability measure. And moreover, by construction, we know that q twiddle is um, absolutely continuous with respect to q. Moreover, we also know that the radom nicodem derivative between q twiddle and q, which is nothing else but phi, is strictly positive. Q almost surely. So it's strictly positive for all omega, but it's in particular positive q almost surely. Hence, by uh, using the theorem 1.8, we conclude that Q twiddle is not only absolutely continuous with respect to Q, but it's also equivalent to the measure Q. So, and now let us compute the value, uh, so the expected value of a random variable Y under this measure Q twiddle for any y taken from this set k. 
So by definition, this is nothing else but the expected value of y times phi under this measure q. So now we plug in the definition of phi, which is 1 plus this term over here. So using linearity, we get the expected value of y under this measure q plus the following fraction, namely the expectation of the product of y times z under this measure q divided by 2 times the L infinity norm of this random variable z. And now we use the property of this random variable z, namely we have chosen z that in, in the orthogonal complement of uh, this space k with respect to that um, uh, probability measure or to that L2 space um, with respect to this measure q, meaning that expectation here is zero, meaning that we have shown that the expectation of y under q turtle is equal to the expectation of y under q for any y taken from that space k. So what we would like to show now is that indeed this um, uh, measure q twiddle is an equivalent martingale measure. So integrability, as I um, already mentioned, is not an issue. We only have to check um, the martingale property. So we have to compute the conditional expectation of xt minus xt minus 1 given the sigma algebra ft minus 1 with respect to this measure q twiddle, and this should be equal to 0 q twiddle almost true for any time point t in the interval 1 up to capital T. Okay, how we should do that? So here's first uh, uh, slide side computation. So let us consider a predictable RD value process H. So then we know that this um, discrete stochastic integral between H and our discounted price process X um, evaluated at the terminal time point capital T is an element from this um, set K. So this means we can now um, take advantage of somehow this relation we have shown over here. Namely, if we know by that relation we convinced ourselves here that the condition and then that the expectation of this discrete stochastic integral under this measure Q twiddle is equal to the expectation of this discrete stochastic integral under this measure Q. And now let us use the property of the condition expectation, namely by the defining property we can also write that as um, the expectation of the conditional expectation of this discrete stochastic integral evaluated at the terminal time point capital T given the sigma algebra F0. But we know that Q is a martingale measure and we know that since um, H is uh, under this assumption that um, um, no, under, um, under the observation we did before, namely, no, under the assumption that uh, our um, uh, sigma algebra f is finitely generated, we know that this uh, predictable process h is bounded. Now we can use the lemma as a theorem we, which we have proven before, namely, which allows us to conclude that this discrete stochastic integral is simply a martingale under Q. That was the statement of our martingale transform. So meaning that this condition expectation over here is equal to uh, the um, discrete stochastic integral at time point zero. And then we take the expected value of that. But by definition, this discrete stochastic integral at time point zero is equal to zero, meaning we have proven that the expected value of any discrete stochastic integral um, um, vanishes. 
under this measure queued fit. So let us now choose a particular predictable process H. And for that, I pick, uh, first I fix the time point T, I fix uh, an index I, and I choose an arbitrary measurable set A from the sigma algebra Ft minus 1. And then I define Hjs to be equal to the indicator function that S is equal to T times the indicator function that uh, of this event A in case that J is equal to I and zero otherwise. And this I define for any time point S in my index set I and for any J in um, the set one up to D. And clearly, uh, this uh, process H, which we define then as the, all these components, is a predictable process. And this predictability simply comes from the fact either this process is zero or at time point when S is equal to T, we pick up this indicator function of the set A, but we have chosen A in the sigma algebra F T minus one, meaning at time point T, this component the i's component is ft measurable and all the other components are zero. Hence, clearly that process is predictable. And moreover, when we compute the um, um, discrete stochastic integral between this predictable process h and the discounted value process at the terminal time point, capital T, and this is then equal uh, to the indicator function of the set A times the difference between the ice component of our discounted price process at time point T and the ice component of our discounted price process at time point T minus 1. So now let us plug this observation um, in that equality to star over here. And then we get the following. So zero is equal to the expectation of this discrete stochastic integral at time point capital T under this measure Q twiddle, which is the same as the, con uh, as the expectation of the indicator function of A um, and times this um, uh, difference of the ice component of the discounted uh, price process at time point t and t minus 1 and using the, the property of the conditional expectation we can also write that in terms of the conditional expectation given sigma algebra f t minus 1 and now taking that function out we have now found the following representation namely that the expected well uh, that the expectation under q twiddle of the random variable indicator function of the set A times this conditional expectation is equal to zero for any A in this uh, sigma algebra F t minus one. And now we can use the uniqueness of the conditional expectation to conclude that this random variable over here has to be zero Q twiddle almost surely. And this uh, holds then true for any T in this in the in in the set one up to capital T and any i in the set one up to d by choosing the uh, the corresponding uh, predictable process h, and this then shows that indeed Q twiddle is as well a martingale measure, but this violates um, our assumption that the the number of uh, um, equivalent martingale measures is equal to 1. Hence we come up with a contradiction which shows then that our financial market model has to be complete. And this concludes the proof. So before coming to an end, I would like to give you another consequence of the fact uh, that the financial market model is arbitrage free and complete. And that's the assertion of the following theorem. So I consider here, as I said, uh, a d plus one dimensional financial market model and I assume that it is arbitrage free and complete. And I would like to denote the unique equivalent martingale measure 
by Q. And then we have the following, that every martingale under this measure Q can uniquely represent it in terms of a discrete stochastic integral of the following form, namely mt can be written as the initial value m0 uh, plus a discrete stochastic integral between a predictable process h and this discounted price process of our underlying financial market. So that's interesting, right? Because a priori, um, a martingale need not to have the representation in terms of a discrete stochastic integral. However, under these two assumptions, we, it is indeed true. And this form of the theorem, you will also see again um, in advanced courses on financial mathematics uh, when you deal with um, um, E2 calculus and uh, the E2 integral and the representation of martingales in terms of certain um, E2 integrals. So let us have a look at the proof of that theorem. It is not complicated. So at the first step we decompose the terminal value of our um, martingale into its positive and its negative part. And then we take advantage of the fact that our financial market model is arbitrage-free and complete. The completeness ensures the existence um, of a replicating strategy for the following two uh, European contingent claims, namely the positive part of our martingale at maturity times the a value of the zero component of our price process at maturity. This is one contingent claim and clearly it's FT measurable and clearly it's uh, non-negative. And the same holds true for that uh, European contingent claim which is given as a negative part of our martingale at the terminal time point times as um, zero component of our price process at the terminal time point and the corresponding replicating strategies I would like to denote by h bar plus and h bar minus. So then we know that we that this um, the discounted um, European contingent claim which is equal to the martingale, the positive part of the martingale at a maturity can be expressed in terms of the discounted value process with respect to the strategy H bar plus at maturity and the same holds true for M minus. So then now we can use theorem 2.12 which tells us that um, both um, processes, both discounted value process VH bar plus and VH bar minus are martingales um, under this equivalent martingale measure Q. And not only they are martingales, but they are non-negative martingales. Hence, we have the following. So, we can write um, the value of MT using the martingale property of our martingale M with respect to the measure Q in terms of this condition expectation of um, M capital T given the sigma algebra of T. So let us then decompose simply um, M capital T into its positive and its negative part. So then we have seen that you can replace the positive and the negative part by the um, discounted value process at maturity of the trading strategy H plus and H minus. So let us then use linearity to split this difference into two conditional expectations. And then we can advan take advantage of the fact that these discounted value processes are martingales which allows us to conclude that this condition expectation over here is equal to the difference between the 
and discounted value process with respect to the trading strategies h bar plus and h bar minus at time point little t. And this holds true for any time point and uh, little t in our index set. And in particular, we also know that m0 is given by the difference of the dis uh, these two discounted value process at initial at the initial time point. So now we can use uh, lemma 2.2c in uh, which allows us to rewrite the discounted value process in terms of a discrete stochastic integral. Namely, we can rewrite the discounted value process with respect to this trading strategy, the self-financing trading strategy h bar plus in terms of its initial value plus the gain process with respect to h plus and recall that this gain process is a discrete stochastic integral. And the same holds true for the discounted value process with respect to h bar minus. So now we use, so we have seen that this difference over here is equal to m0. And we have um, uh, also seen that um, the discrete stochastic integral is linear, meaning that we can rewrite it in terms of one discrete stochastic integral with respect to this predictable process h plus minus h minus and let us simply denote this difference over here uh, by h and then we came up exactly with that representation and now using again these two corollaries uh, we have previously seen tells us immediately that this these two values are, un are independent of the choice of the equivalent martingale measure and since we have here only one that's uh, doesn't matter this thing this value here is uniquely de uh, determined and moreover we also know that these um, discounted value processes are uniquely de determined um, uh, for um, yeah are uniquely determined um, and independent of the choice of the trading strategy meaning we have here this discrete stochastic integral is also unique. And this finishes then the proof of that theorem.